Evolution is a well-accepted theory in the science community, but what are the evidences really for evolution? Now, as uh, Darwin said, evolution means the organisms the, uh, produce descendants with modifications. And uh, the, the, the modification is due to um, mutation, for example. Now, uh, one of the evidences is observation. Observation, we have mosquitoes and other bugs that they can spread diseases such as malaria and uh, other diseases, and we want to get rid of them. Well, in the 1940s, there came up with a, in Europe came up with a chemical, the DDT, that was pretty effective against bugs. So the bugs uh, notice that one of them has a red mark. It's, you really cannot see it, but I wanted to mark it as a different because when we uh, put DDT on those insects, only one of them or very few with mutation became a survivor because it's resistant to DDT. Now, reproducing over and over again, so the population pretty much produced a DDT resistant population, uh, organisms that are resistant. So after that, when we put DDT over them, none of them will die. So it's kind of observation, we see the resistance in here. So they change the genetic material in that population change. So it's evolution. The other observation, what we can uh, see in our surroundings also the antibiotic resistance among uh, bacteria. So one bacteria and produces tons of other bacteria uh, through binary fission. One of them or a couple of them you see that has a mutation is antibiotic resistance in its uh, genome. So when we use an antibiotics all of them that doesn't have resistance will die and those who are resistant to the antibiotics can produce another generation, another uh, another generation of bacteria that is resistant to antibiotics. The other evidence is the fossils or fossil records. Fossils are the remains of trace or traces of organisms from the past. Uh, let's talk about very briefly about the horses. Horses, uh, and I cannot draw it, 50 million years ago, 35 million years ago, and up to recent, their size changed. The skull formation changed a little bit, as well as the foot. Uh, the foot. But the main characteristics still remain the same. The book uh, brings up the example for the elephants. The third evidence is for the evolution is homologous structures. Homologous structures are, for example, the forelimbs. And the forelimbs for the mammals uh, contain the humerus, uh, more, uh, the most proximal, the ulna and the radius, the carpal bones, metacarpals, and the phalanges. Uh, if you are in anatomy, you will learn about that. If you are not, well, you still have to know these uh, basic structures. Now, for the whale, it's a modified into flippers and it's used for swimming, for the cats for walking, as well as for humans for grabbing subjects obje uh, and objects. Now, one structure used for many purposes, that's a homologous structure that supports the evolution. We have to talk about, on the other hand, the analogous structures. Analogous structures is different from homologous. That means similar, for example, the butterfly's uh, wings versus the duck's wings. Both of them are wings, but they are similar structures, but the species relate to each other very distantly. And the similar environment uh, challenge made the production of the wings, for example, for the duck, as well as for the butterfly.
So they, are, they don't relate to each other that closely as the mammals with the homologous structures. The other evidence is the embryo embryonic homologies. In utero, the development of vertebrae are pretty much the same. The post-anal tail is present. The next one is vestigial structures. Vestigial structures as well as vestigial organs, they are remnants of structures that served important function in the common ancestors. For example, the appendix for humans, for plant eaters it was really important, or the pelvic bone and the legs for snakes. That tells us that the snakes, uh, common ancestors, had legs. Now, next one is molecular homologies. Molecular homologies, uh, the hemoglobin structure, the DNA and the RNA structure in uh, different organisms are similar. And the last is biogeography. That means closely related species are usually found in areas that are geographically close to each other. For example, the Galapagos Island turtles, they are more related to each other than to different turtles around the world. I hope that's it and I didn't miss anything. That's the end.